Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. call to worship. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ lived in a family at Nazareth. As we meet together now, help us to learn more about your love for us, that we may share that love with our families and friends. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, and on this fourth Sunday of Lent and Mothering Sunday, we extend a very, very warm welcome to you this morning from the Methodist Circuit here on the island of Jersey. We have our uh, messy church this morning with us, and some of the members of that church are going to be leading the worship this morning. But we begin with our first hymn, a hymn of praise. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King, his love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things, his love endures forever.
Now, Doreen, a very valued member of our Messy Church team, is going to be leading us in our opening prayers. Thank you, Doreen. Let us pray. God, in whom we move, move and have our being, you know us, love us and sustain us. We praise you for your goodness and thank you for your care. You created the world and all that is in it. You knitted us together in our mother's womb. You made us male and female in your image. You made each one of us unique and individual. Unique for relationship with you. Unique in the talents and gifts we have to serve you. We had gone astray, lost in our sin. Like a woman who had lost her gold coin, you came looking for us. You sent your son Jesus to be one of us. He spoke of your love, healed the sick, cared for the poor, welcomed the outcast. He longed to gather us under his wings, like a mother hen her chicks. He gave up his life, so that we might be found in you. Gracious God, today we especially thank you for mothers, for their care and nurture, for love and support, wisdom and sacrificial giving. For tears and smiles, encouragement and correction. Thank you that in such love we see a reflection of your own love for us. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit that we may know your great love and truth. Anoint us with your Spirit's power that we may witness to you and serve you and love your people and world. To the glory of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And what do you like about your mummy? With me and she goes with me and she cuddles me and kisses me. That I sounds like lovely. Everything about my mummy. Oh. I like everything about my mummy as well. And do you go out sometimes? Yes. What do you like doing with your mummy? Everything I was going to say. Yeah, probably everything. Do you go out I walking? Like doing everything with yeah. Ella. I like doing everything with Ella and Mummy. Mmm, you do lots, don't you? 
lots of really nice things. I really like to play with my sister. And do you like going for walks? Yeah. Yes. And Especially with... Sylvie. And do you like going on I the like beach? Having baths. And yes. you like are you like having baths? Oh, that's nice. You do lots of lovely things with your mummy, don't you? Yeah. I like going on the beach and mummy and I I like going on the beach. And do you? Mummy and I sometimes go for a swim. Whoa! Do you? I don't like swimming. Only in my swimming club. Do you think your mummy should have a special day? Yes. Yes. And what do you think you should do on that special day? Um, do loads of things with us. Go to a restaurant and sit there and eat ice cream and chocolate and sweets. <laughs> and do you think mummy would like and that? Say. Good things about everyone. Uh, and do you think Mummy would like that, Sylvie? Yes. Yes. I think Mummy would love it. Right, are you going to blow her a big kiss? Now we're very pleased this morning uh, to have Fiona with us and Fiona is one of our Messy Church mums and she's going to be bringing us our Bible reading this morning, from Psalm 139 verses 1 to 18. Thank you Fiona. Reading for Mothering Sunday, Psalm 139 verses 1 to 18. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before the word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is light to you. For you created my innermost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained me for were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Good morning. Wasn't it lovely to hear our children from Messy Church this morning telling us what it is that they love about their mums? But we know that Mothering Sunday actually can be a difficult and a painful day for many people. 
for a whole host of different reasons. And so today we're going to focus on the one who knew us and loved us even before we were conceived in our mother's wombs. Now in the Bible, Jesus tells us when we pray to say our Father. And in John's Gospel alone, God is named as Father over a hundred times. There are some beautiful images of God as a loving Father in the Old Testament too. But the truth is, rightly or wrongly, often people's perception of God is shaped by their experience of their earthly father or indeed mother. I remember reading a story about a young woman whose obsessively religious father almost wrecked her life. He controlled the family home and not in a good way. She was forced to attend church, to read the Bible and pray all throughout her childhood. He criticised her mercilessly and openly disapproved of her. And so the heavenly father that she came to know turned out to be a larger than life expression of her contemptible earthly father. And needless to say, in her mid-thirties, despite being a bright and beautiful young woman with a good career, she had a mental health crisis. She could recite verses from the Bible and utter religious platitudes about God's love, but in her heart, she believed that God disapproved of virtually everything about her. But one day in conversation with her vicar, he asked her if there was anyone whom she felt truly loved her. And suddenly she began to smile and she said enthusiastically, my grandmother. So the vicar asked her what it was about her grandmother that made her so happy. She proceeded to tell him that when she was little at her grandmother's house, she accidentally knocked over a treasured vase, a family heirloom. Knowing how important it was to the family, she screamed as it crashed to the ground. But when her grandmother rushed into the room, she wasn't angry and she didn't tell the little girl off. Instead, with a look of relief on her face, she scooped the little girl up into her arms and said, Oh, thank God, I thought you were hurt. And so the vicar looked this woman in the eye and said, What if God was like your grandmother and not your dad? How would it change things if instead of a harsh father figure who always puts you down, you imagined a God as a warm, motherly figure who gathers you up into her arms when you make a mistake or get something wrong. Well, giving her permission to think of God as her loving grandmother instead of her disapproving father changed that young woman's life and she began to flourish. Now, you may think it's wrong to encourage someone to think of God in feminine terms. But the truth is that God is beyond gender. God is neither male nor female. God is a mystery beyond all our imagining. And so no represent representation of God can be taken literally. However, we need images of God to help us understand something of God's character, don't we? And as well as images of God as father in the Bible, there are some wonderful images of God as mother two, which also tell us truths about God's character. One of the common images in the Bible of God as mother is as a mother bird sheltering her children under her wings. We see this in Ruth chapter 12 verse 2. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have taken refuge. And the Psalms use this imagery Psalm 17 verse 8 says, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. In the New Testament, Jesus, of course, picks up on these images when he laments over Jerusalem. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But the Bible offers images of God as a human mother, too. Of all the prophets, Isaiah seems the fondest of this imagery. 
In Isaiah 42, 14, God says, For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. In Isaiah 66, 13, God says, as a mother comforts her children, so will I comfort you. And in Isaiah 49, 15, God says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she is born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. And that leads us nicely into our reflection on this morning's psalm. When we look at the Opening five verses of the psalm, it tells us that God knows each of our stories intimately. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. And each of these verses conveys a different layer of God's knowledge of us. God knows us and is with us every minute of every night and every day. God is with us even in our most mundane activities, studying us even when we think we're alone. He enters our innermost world, discerning what makes us tick and why we do what we do. He has such a grasp of each one of us that he knows exactly what we will say or do next, as if we had already spoken or acted. God knows our hearts, our fears, our thoughts, our motives, our dreams and frustrations. He knows our past, present and future. He understands us. He notices what's going on around us, to us and inside us. God understands us and knows us better than we know ourselves. And that can feel a bit unnerving, can't it? But we can rest assured that God knows everything about us and he loves us still. Thinking about verse 6 now, when the psalm writer who we believe to be David reflects on God's thorough knowledge of himself, he concludes that such knowledge is too lofty for him to attain. In other words, he's saying, I can't grasp this. It's too overwhelming for me. It's beyond my understanding. And as he reflects further, David's first instinct is the same as ours. How can I escape? Where can I hide? If God knows everything about me, he knows I'm a hypocrite. He's heard my lies. He saw what I did last week. And in the following verses, David asks, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And of course, he concludes that there is nowhere that we can hide from God. God will not let us escape. But God's interest in us is not simply to point out everything that we've got wrong, like the father of the girl in our story. Rather, God chooses to be in our lives and is determined to give us grace. God is on our side. Verses 9 and 10 say, If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Even if we didn't have a positive experience in our relationship with our earthly parents, we are wanted by God. Over and over in the Bible, we see this affirmed. We are called God's chosen and dearly beloved children. We are told that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God knows us and wants us. This psalm tells us that it was God who created our inmost beings and knitted us together in our mother's womb. It tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that God's works are wonderful. As we think of that image of God knitting us together, it paints a picture of God's intricate attention to detail, crafting us stitch by stitch. The fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made speaks of the loving care that God took over each and every one of us. Each one of us is totally unique. 
one of a kind, right down to our fingerprints. The young woman in our story this morning, because of her earthly father, had a low sense of self-worth. But this psalm tells us that God doesn't make rubbish. Rather, God's works are wonderful. Each and every one of us is wonderful. We are God's treasured creation, made in God's likeness. God knows us, he made us, he wants us, and he has plans for us. The psalm tells us that all our days are written in God's book and planned before a single one of them began. God has created each day of our lives, tailoring circumstances, establishing boundaries and fashioning opportunities for his glory and for our good. But God doesn't just set the plan in motion and then look the other way. His thoughts are on us constantly. He greets us each morning with fresh mercy and new opportunities, ready to go through the hours with us. He loves our company. And he has specific plans for each of us, which we alone can fulfill. What a wonderful image of God this psalm offers us. As we reflect on Mothering Sunday, it may be that for you, your lasting memory of your mother or your father is something hurtful that they said or did that still wounds you to this day. Or it may be that they didn't say the words that you longed to hear or do the things that you longed for them to do. But we mustn't draw conclusions about ourselves based on what others say and do. We must look higher. If we want to know how much we are truly loved, we must look to God because we matter to God so much that he sent his son to die for us. If, like me, Mothering Sunday is a happy day for you, full of wonderful memories, then we give God praise and thanks for that this morning. But whatever Mothering Sunday may mean to you, never forget, we belong, we are loved and cherished, and we are God's forever. Amen. We're going to listen to a worship song now, and I know that this worship song is the favourite song of a very good friend of Danny and mine. And this friend was sadly abused both physically and emotionally by his mother throughout his childhood. But in his adult life, he became a Christian. And so this song uh, became very pertinent and meaningful to him because he found that there was someone who loved him very much and would always be faithful to him. And so we listen to, what a faithful God have I. Oh Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence. Of joy in worship and wonder, I behold your face, singing what a faithful God. Let's go. 
God we have indeed. We're going to hear from Katie in a moment who's going to be leading us in our prayers of intercession but before we do you might be interested to know that Katie is the lady here in Jersey who pioneered a movement which has now gone worldwide. It's called Messy Vintage and Katie uh, became involved in Messy Church and became very passionate uh, that Messy Church could also be used to tell the older generation about God's love for them. And so she started this movement, as I say, here in Jersey, Messy Vintage, and it has uh, caught on and there have been conferences all over the world. And uh, it's now Messy Vintage uh, um, sessions are held in Canada, Australia, in Sweden. And if it's something that you think your church might be interested in, uh, you'd be pleased to know that Katie has recently had a book published um, and here it is I've got it here uh, it says messy vintage 52 s sessions to share Christ-centered fun and fellowship with the older generation and in there is really as it says 52 sessions everything you need if it's something that you think that you could take to the older generations not just in your churches but in your uh, nearby residential homes or just reaching out into the community um, this book is available from the Bible Reading Fellowship website. You can order it from there. And also um, some of the top name bookshops are also selling it. So just something to bear in mind. And if you want to know more about this, uh, I'm sure if you get in touch with our Methodist um, Circuit office, um, Katie will be delighted to talk to you. But anyway, we're going over to Katie now and she is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Katie. Let us share together in a time of prayer. Nurturing God, who gave us an example of unconditional love. We give thanks for our parents, families and friends. Thank you for those who care for us, who sit by quietly, supportively, 
and let us make our own mistakes. Those who are willing to forgive and encourage us. Compassionate God, we pray for those who do not find Mothering Sunday an easy or joyous day. For those who have had difficult experiences of their mother or father, or whose family life is full of conflict, bitterness and recrimination, Assure them of your love and bring them peace. Empathetic God, we pray for those who find Mothering Sunday difficult because they have lost a child or because they are unable to have much wanted children. We pray for those who struggle to bring up children alone without physical or financial support. Loving God, who sacrificed your own beloved Son to die on a cross to save each one of us, draw near to those who need you and reassure them of your unfailing and never-ending love. Caring God, we pray for those throughout the world who struggle because of war, famine and natural disaster. We pray for those who do not have enough water or shelter and those whose children die of starvation. Generous God, show us how to care and how to share. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, in whatever form or language that you are comfortable or is familiar with to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, our final hymn this morning, we're going to sing that great Charles Wesley hymn that sings about the love that excels all other love. Love divine, all loves excel.
Well, I'd like to thank everyone who has taken part in our worship this morning. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. And I do hope uh, that you all will have a blessed Mothering Sunday, knowing that there is one who loves us and holds us fast and will never let us go. So a final prayer. May God enfold you in a tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. And may the Holy Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, to shine upon you and be gracious, and be gracious unto you. To shine upon you and be gracious, and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Upon you.